Well, Robert, Kate, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited about this movie and you guys working together. Um, what was interesting is I was reading, you've been fascinated with Christine for years. So tell me about the first moment you learned about her and this sort of however many year journey to this point. Yeah, I think it was like 2004, 2005, my really good friend, Nathan Gelgood, who's an artist, uh, was just telling me the story. And I was, you know, I was immediately fascinated, but also fascinated about why I was fascinated, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it was probably four or five years before I had made my first film, and so I, I, I didn't, you know, it was among the many things I was like, oh, like maybe I can make a film about that one day, but I never... I never thought I'd want to make a straightforward documentary about the story because when you look at her life, it, there's such an imbalance between what was going on and the event you know, that ended her life, which mm -hmm. is so horrible and sensational and tragic. Um, and so a straightforward documentary telling of that I don't think would be fruitful for me to try. So, so I just sort of wrestled with it for a really long time and Kate and I have been friends for a decade, you know, and um, how we're getting old. Um, <laughs> And <laughs> no. I'm getting old, you're not. Um, but, um, but then I just, after my last film, Actress, I just said, oh, that's the way in. So the, the, you know, just filming an actor trying to go through the process so we could see the layers and see the attempt to tell the story because that was what I was, that's what I was fascinated with was my own attempt to tell the story. Mm -hmm. Well, in the film, there's a, I think it's a historian in Sarasota that says the first time you die is when you physically die, and the second time is when the last person says your name for the last time. Yeah. Um, and that really struck me. Was that sort of an avenue into this project where you're like, we don't want people to stop saying her name? Or, you know, what was the reason why you thought this film needed to be made? Yeah. For both of you. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, certainly one of the things that was most intriguing to me at the onset of the, the shooting process was how largely forgotten Christine Chevick seemed to be, like even in Florida where she lived and where she ended her life. Um, but I, I, I don't yeah, I can't speak for you. No, sure, you can definitely speak for me. <laughs> um, well, that's what, that's what the movie is, is you speaking for all of us. Um, the, the, I, I don't know, I mean, I have such conflicted feelings about wh what she did and why she did it, and I don't know. And I, d I think the film embodies those conflicted feelings. I'm yeah. certain I don't. I don't. And I think neither one of us really wanted to get in a situation where we're saying we're giving voice to someone who's gone because, in a way, that's impossible. Because the film really is more about us trying to figure it out. Um, I will say that the fact that there's two films here, so many years after she wanted to be seen, you know, and mm -hmm. that's what she wanted the, her final recording, her final um, broadcast recorded. She wanted that to be, she wanted that to get out there. She wanted it to spark a conversation about depression and about, about, um, about violence on TV and blood and guts to television and all that. And so the fact that so many years later it, she's being seen in this way is, uh, it's conflicting and, but it's very emotional for me, you know, because mm -hmm. it's something it's in, it's incredible that this is happening. I mm -hmm. think. Did you both of you, but especially you, Kate? Did you feel like her committing suicide on television was because she wanted to spark a discussion about depression? Like, is that something that's speculation, or did you guys you really feel strongly that that's what that moment was about? Sure. I mean, I think uh, a large part of what the movie is about for me is my inability to know exactly what her intention was. But yeah, I I as best I can gather. I do think that it, that was a genuine hope of hers. I think that she was also probably very, very, very depressed. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's a combination of things, as everything always is with human beings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I think you know she wrote a speech to say. Yeah. Um, and that is clear that she did that. You know, we, mm -hmm. we know that that's true. I think if she wouldn't have written a speech and she would have just gone on TV and done it, it still would have been political. Like if you know, a woman kills herself on television, it's a political act, no matter what, mm -hmm. the no matter what how we frame it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think what Kate said, we don't we don't know. And, and in fact, one of the things that's so fascinating about the story is that her, the final moment seems so orchestrated and so planned and so purposeful. But, but that it, 
that it's almost inadequate to, to, to really think that it was exactly what it is or, mm-hmm. or what it seems to be. Right. It, it brings up all these other questions like, well, it, how could it be that? Because she was dealing with this and she was dealing with that and she was dealing with this and yes, she had this thought. But, and all those sort of questions, I think, are just natural human desire to try to explain something that's often very unexplainable, mm-hmm. you know, um, and suicide. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, that's, that's kind of what we're trying to get into. I think. Mm-hmm. And I love, you know, you guys went to Sarasota and you're like, you're almost like a reporter or a journalist, but an actress at the same time. Is that the way that you would normally approach a role or was that sort of only in the context of Christine, or do you do that for House of Cards and, and all of your other characters? Um, Spray tans and you know, all that good stuff. Yeah, all of that, yeah, all of that good <laughs> on the ground in Florida stuff was very specific to this film. But I mean, I think the, the thing that is most uh, divergent from the way I would normally prepare for something is just um, the public nature of it. I think I, I mention it in the film when I say, mm-hmm. like, I would normally be doing this by myself in a right. corner rather than mm-hmm. talking to you, Robert, um, about it. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, of of course I do research and and try and inundate myself a bit in the world of the character, but the investigative quality of um, this, Mm -hmm. what I do in this particular film is very specific. um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're, I think we're trying to basically do what, you know, we're externalizing what Kate's internal process usually is and dramatizing what her process is. So like anybody learned something, so we're just turning that, like you, you would be re- reading books or being in your own head and laying down in the bed and thinking and, and we're just trying to figure out ways to make that or, or just like to express that, but also... To engage with that. Yeah, to engage... It's it's it. It. Yeah, and then, but purposefully you see Kate rebel against that process mm-hmm. at, at a, min- few, a few times in the movie. But also it's important for me that um, in the blurring between the character and the person, mm-hmm. um, that's what Christine Chubbuck was a journalist, and she was was was. So we we're right. actually seeing Kate try to, without and not even the role, but in tr- try to em- embody that right. that job, mm-hmm. which is a, which is you know you're seeing her work through that mm-hmm. too. Right. And the very, oh, mm-hmm. but the very true part of what you see in the movie. Um, in terms of what it would normally be like for me to prepare, is that if I were to be preparing to play Christine Chubbuck in an actual narrative film, I would be very frustrated by the paucity of information about her life. There's so there's such a limit. I was like shocked. It's also it makes you realize how accessible everyone's else whole is. life story is <laughs> today. I was like, oh my god, people could just read about me online. Yeah. What was the biggest clue? Can you e- either of you pinpoint one thing besides the final moment and, and what she wrote? to say online, was there something else that was like, ah, this is something, this is a clue to who this person was? I mean, that's hard. I mean, I think the fact that she was happy the last day um, and that she wore a dress in a way that she didn't didn't normally, she dressed a different way, seemingly, um, and she was very upbeat and chipper, um, is, is a pretty good indication that she had crossed some sort of line uh, and that she was very sure that what she was about to do was the right thing. Mm-hmm. Having said that, there's once again, that's the thing about the story and, and what happened. I keep saying story, but the, tr- the truth of what happened, there still were circumstantial things that, that caused the moment to happen. So mm-hmm. even though that, that's every time you look at something, it's almost like, what, what quantum physics or something you look at the tiny thing and it moves and you, you know we can't observe it it just it jumps around kind mm-hmm. of and I feel like that's what this is that's what Christine Chubbuck's tragic story is to me mm-hmm. is every time I think I got it it moves mm-hmm. and I just wanted to try to capture that feeling because I think that's what a lot of people feel yeah. if their friend commits suicide and they're trying to un- understand it or you know even like my grandfather Great grandfather committed suicide, and and I know why, because mm-hmm. his his his, uh, his his wife died, and like, but mm-hmm. but the way he did it, it still makes me think like, well, there may be something else. It's a kind of kinetic thing, mm-hmm. like it connects the dots in a sad way, but I don't know. Um, I love Robert that you always explore in your films sort of the aspect of performance, 
And I wonder, I think that this film is sort of a launching pad to a bigger story, like outside of the U.S. Is there a story, you know, if you could shoot anywhere, any story, what would it be? It's fun, just a fun question. I don't know. I, I, um, I mean, I, I, I don't know. This, this film happened so quickly, and um, I'm, this, it sounds like a cop-out answer, but I'm deliberately not thinking. I mean, I have several project ideas, and, and, I, and I want to, and I, I, I am happy... I, I don't, my last like actress was about my neighbor and then I've made a yeah. film with my sister and Kate's my friend. I, I feel like, I, at first I thought that was a crutch for a while, but I know that like the only way you get a movie like this mm -hmm. is how close we are, right. you know? And I, that's the only thing I can, I just want to keep working with people that I'm really close with. Mm -hmm. um, because at least for now, that's what I, I think it's the only way to do it. So. Mm -hmm. Wherever that story is, it's going to have to be right. with someone I'm close with. Asia, Egypt. <laughs> Asia with a buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Explore the go Asia, geisha <laughs> performance aspect. Well, thank you guys. It's such yeah. a brave movie. It was so nice to talk to you. Thanks so much. Nice to talk to you. Thank you.